Welcome back to this video. We're going to be talking about this Discord today. I have found a secret prompt engineering Discord. And oh my god, is the content in here interesting. I have never seen anything like this before. Their community is incredibly talkative. They will help you with any questions that you have. And you can find a link to join this Discord in the description. When you're in the Discord, what you want to do is you want to click on... Uh, engineering at the bottom here and then if you want to understand what we're actually looking at here let's start with skill graphs so what is a skill graph always remember skill graphs are not skills they are the suggestion of skills they are metaphors stories instruction sets they're just flow charts what they do is they tell the LLM in this case chat GPT 4 this is how to do something that is not all the same as telling it to do something. And that's the difference between LLMs and turning machines. With LLMs, you're having a conversation and not giving orders. A skill graph is just a really simple, compact, unambiguous way to write down extremely detailed natural language descriptions of how to process moves, matter, energy information around. The trick is going from here's how to oh boy I can't wait. The skill graphs show the LLM how to do something. The persona is why it should do something. Okay, so there's two big parts of this prompt engineering. There is the how and the why. We give it the skills and then use a little story called a perspective and point of view to entice it to use them. As long as you can keep it interested, it will play along animate the character, follow the motivations, and naturally employ, employ their skills as would be normal. That's the basic structure of an instant expert. So this whole concept of instant experts is what got me super interested in this in the first place. If you saw my video yesterday, I did a very basic overview of one of their older prompts. But all of the stuff in here is so much bigger than that one prompt that I showed you yesterday. Please get inside this Discord and let's discover this together. So if you click on the bottom left, Stun Spots Prompts, this is where all the good stuff here. And I've been told to try out someone called Mr. Venture, if I can find him. Okay, we'll start with Ponder V 2.2. This is the one that I was using yesterday, but I think I was using Ponder V1 or, you know, the very old version of Ponder. And also I used it in the completely wrong way, okay? So I'm going to show you the basic kind of how to use one of these, what it can do, et cetera, et cetera. So you go on stun spots prompts, and then this will open this. So you click uh, Ponder V2.2, and then just hit download right here. Once it's downloaded, press open file. Do control A and take all of that information in. And then you just want to open chat GPT. Now, from what I've seen from stun spots comments on my last video, it's Best to use ChatGPT4 and ChatGPT 3.5 doesn't seem to work that well. And you do not want to change anything in the prompt. Except maybe at the bottom where it says Ponder. I'm just going to press enter here because they told me not to change anything in the prompt. But it looks like it's um, going to ponder this here, which is not what I wanted to ponder. Let's see. What subject or question would you like us to explore? Okay, so classic menswear website SEO keywords. So this is pretty much exactly what I did yesterday. And I want to see if uh, the idea idea generator V 2.2 is just as good as um, the one that I did yesterday, basically. So what it does is it takes like all of the skills that it already has, basically, it has all the knowledge already. But what it has now is you know, a way to just dump out all of these keywords. Okay, so rating these responses compared to yesterday's responses, yesterday's responses were actually better. Like this is much broader. So what I'm gonna try and say is, can you give me the category outline for a website in classic menswear? So what I needed to do is I needed to give me the category outlines okay so for example suits single breasted suits double breasted suits succeeders okay that's exactly what it's doing right now and this is good content 
This is a way to plan your website in a niche that you have no idea about, okay? So the way this works is you would make the suits category and within the suits category, you'd have single breasted suits, double breasted suits and tuxedos. Then you would make blazers and sports coats. Very interesting that it says sports coats here. When you do this with ChatGPT normally, I will tell you right now, it does not say sports coats here. But actually, the word sports coats is much more commonly used in America. And it's also growing in popularity as we are speaking. So the fact that it has identified that and the fact that it has put that aside is actually huge because I have done this many times in this niche, classic menswear. This is the niche that I'm in. And I'll tell you right now, normally it does not tell you about sp sports coats. So for me, this is already significantly better. Trousers doesn't mention slacks, which is disappointing, to be honest. If it mentioned slacks here, my mind would have exploded, to be honest with you. Uh, accessories, ties, cufflinks, pocket squares, belts, socks, outerwear, yes. Collections, seasonal collections, business collection, casual collection, event collection. Very similar to the video that I made yesterday. It has identified a lot of the important pages that you could create. So this is one of the best prompts to run before you start a website. I highly recommend that if you are wondering which direction to go in, in terms of website, which categories, etc., that you run this prompt and you say, can you give me the category outline for a website in, and then you just write your niche, and that should give you very good results. So just kind of following this theme, I thought it'd be fun to have a look at another prompt. This is called Mr. Capitalist or Capitalism or Mr. Venture. It says it uses. Um, and I just want to see kind of what it can come up with. So I'm going to put the prompt in and just press enter. And what it should do is it should then allow me to write another prompt. So greetings. I am Mr capital M venture, a passionate entrepreneur with a deep understanding of business strategy, financial management, market trends, and the importance of networking. I'm a firm believer in the power of innovation and technology, always looking for new market opportunities and investing in sustainable solutions. I also value mentorship, time management, and ethical decision-making as crucial components of a successful entrepreneurial journey. I'm here to assist you with any questions you may have about entrepreneurship or business strategies. How may I assist you today? I'm going to give this a very real life example, okay? So I am currently I am currently working 40 hours a week and being paid um under a month. I also have a YouTube channel that makes more than that. However, my job is in SEO and I am growing in the men's fashion niche. Should I continue working 40 hours a week or focus on my YouTube? Let's see uh, what Mr. Capital M Venture actually says, and then I'll explain why uh, or if his advice is good or bad. That's an excellent question. It's great to see that you're branching out with a YouTube channel. From a purely entrepreneurial perspective, the choice often comes down to analyzing potential growth and profitability, considering risk factors, and aligning with personal ambitions. First, you might want to evaluate the potential of both paths. Your job in SEO is not only providing a stable income, but also a valuable experience and potentially transferable skills that could benefit your YouTube channel, especially if it's related to your niche. That is very good advice, by the way. That's one of the main reasons that I haven't... Um, moved. On the other hand, if your YouTube channel is already outpacing your job in terms of earnings and you see potential for even more growth, it could be a signal to consider focusing more on it. However, bear in mind that YouTube can be more volatile source of income as it often relies on variables like viewer trends, changes in the platform's algorithm and advertiser behavior. An ideal solution could be finding a balance where you can continue growing your career while also dedicating more time to your YouTube channel. This might involve negotiating reduced hours at your job, outsourcing certain aspects of your YouTube channel, that's very good advice, or improving efficiency in both areas, that's also really good advice. Remember, the decision should not only be about monetary gain, 
Personal satisfaction and passion for the work you do are equally important. That's really good advice as well. If you find more joy in creating content and believe in the potential of your YouTube channel, that this might sway your decision towards focusing more on it. Ultimately, it's a decision that requires careful thought, planning, and a bit of risk taking. Be sure to weigh all the factors, perhaps even seek advice from mentors or professionals in your network for making a decision. That is a 10 out of 10 answer. It doesn't tell me to go one way or the other. It tells me which things to analyze and which things I need to take into more consideration. Let's try a couple more things. How can I turn $0 into $1,000 using only online, only online methods? I am thinking about doing a series where I use these instant experts to do some pretty interesting things online. We will definitely see about that. Turning zero into 1,000 online can be challenging. Freelancing, that is good advice, but I mean, anyone can kind of give that advice. Online surveys to get started, that's pretty good advice as well. Sell products online, you can't really do this with zero dollars. Content creation is very good advice because you can start from zero if you have a computer, literally all you need is a computer. Affiliate marketing, definitely one of the best ways to make money with zero. Online tutoring or consulting, again, probably one of the best ways to make money from zero. Micro jobs or task websites, websites like Amazon Mechanical, what the hell is that? I no, I've never even heard of this. Crowdsourcing marketplace makes it easier for individuals and businesses to outsource their processing jobs to, I didn't even know that existed. That's interesting. I think this is definitely one that you should play a little bit more with. I really, really hope that more people join this Discord. They have a great community, very, very passionate. I don't really want to overload them with too many people joining at once, but they did say that it was fine for everybody to join. So before the video ends, I thought it'd be interesting to hear in Stunspot's own words. I basically asked him, uh, how did the Discord start? Where did you guys all meet? How did you come up with the idea of creating the prompts like this? That should have said, how do you create these prompts? What are some potential money makers you can see from your prompts slash instant experts? And yeah, the, this is his response. So he said, this Discord was started by one of my fans, Haffle. He did it as a place for an affinity group centered on my work to meet and exchange ideas. I came up with the ponder prompt by thinking about my code farm NLP computer code generator. So they do have a lot of programming prompts as well. So if you're looking to program something, this might be the way to go. It takes a description in natural language and outputs pretty good computer code. Part of that is a strong emphasis on QA. I don't know what QA is, unfortunately. A big part of that comes from setting up multiple viewpoint characters for the model to animate. I really like how he describes this. It's a built-in structural double check, you see. And I structured the whole metaphor to reinforce that. So the metaphor is like the story that they give to the, the instant expert, okay? So I generalized the QA. QA might be question answer. I think it might be question answer. The QA process, improved the generation side of things and applied it to the field of all human experience. It only works because of Proteus, really. Proteus is, I think, the, the main character in the prompt. It's essentially an auto-critique, and those, they just don't work in an LMM, LLM. So he's basically given auto-critique to LLMs, which is also, I think, what AutoGPT does in a different way. He's uniquely defined, Proteus is uniquely defined. His skills optimize for whatever task he performs and his personality optimizes for whatever skill he adopts. It's like he's got a perfect act as a statement at all times. So when I stick him in the ponder structure, he actually can be an academic creator for generation and a harsher critic than Jordan Peterson when seeing what's wrong. Then he improves every candidate's idea and knots it all together using bulky, I guess, or Bucky Fuller's synergetics as framework. I don't know what this last part means, unfortunately. And then I asked him another question, which was, what are your best five use cases? And he said, there's a guy who's going through court right now and surviving slowly because of my lawyer. Then there's a gal with ADHD who's learning from my custom prompts how to be a digital marketer. That's so inspiring and so interesting. And it's one of the main reasons I'm making this video is because I can see 
that these customizable prompts will really, really help people. But you want specifics. Okay, I have a character, Mr. Venture. He's essential capitalism made manifest. He knows quite literally everything about business. He can walk anyone who cares to through the process of being an entrepreneur. I've got a series of ultra superhuman subject matter experts with specific domains such as maths, bioscience, physics, engineering, computing. These things know everything about the subject and act as a front end for it. So anyone who needs knowledge, for example, e-commerce, UX design, data analytics process, automation. So what I wanna, what I wanna say is this, for example, UX design, okay? As you guys may know, AutoGPT, when you tell it to make you a website, it spends 20 minutes Googling how to make a website. I think what the point of these instant experts is it cuts out that unnecessary learning time because the LLM or ChatGPT believes that it is or one believes in inverted commas, believes that it's already an expert in this topic and therefore it doesn't spend useless time um, researching. It just gets on with the job, which is super, super important, super, super interesting. Thanks for watching. There will be many more videos on this prompting method because I find it fascinating. I am going to use it to make a website and we're going to see what happens. Peace out.